seven in the morning and my ferry is in an hour 40 hour 45 this is a realistic travel seven isn't that early but uh i did not sleep well last night so let's get it nothing i like better than having to hold on to the shower because this damn thing's broken And just like that, leaving Al Hathiris and on my way to Tangier. I am very tired <laughs> and kind of wish that I scheduled the boat for noon, but at the same time, I'll be arriving in Tangier now at like 10.30 or 11. Just depends on how quickly the ferry uh, gets there. So I'll get there in the late morning, be able to get a nice lunch uh, and then check into my hostel. Puerto Bahia de Algeciras. I made it. Actually, it was a lot shorter of a walk than I thought. I'm here plenty early. Time to board, and so far, I'm one of four people. So either this ferry is gonna be very empty, or a bunch of people are running very late right now. Still just one of four people. Not a questioning as to where everyone else is. I guess this ferry is just for us. That explains it. I didn't even think about the cars. And that was an option for me to pick too. Like, oh, what car are you taking? I guess we're just one of four people who don't have cars. That's it. Views from the deck. Looks like I can go through here. Coffee acquired and box water acquired because I already drank all my water. I need to figure out a permanent solution for my water drinking because um, I drink a lot of water and I can't just be buying bottles or in this case boxes whenever I need to quench my thirst. Anyways, that was only a euro so it could be worse. There's a little bit of a view and apparently I can't get down there but I can get to the top deck. So I'm gonna drink this coffee and then make my way up there and hopefully have a nice view on the way over. Get some sea breeze on my face, you know, a bit more sun. Not that I need it or anything. We're moving. Goodbye, Al Khabiras. And hello, Tangier. Feels good, feels good to be on the move. There's land way off in the distance over there. Not this here, but the land way in the distance. That is Morocco. And Tangier is just a bit up the coast. Here I come, Morocco, woo! Closer and closer to Morocco by the minute. Unfortunately, we got some cloud cover. Not over there. I don't know. It doesn't take away from the experience, though. Woo! Well, there's Tangier Med. Um, something that I didn't take into account or realize. There's two different Tangiers. There's Tangier Med port and there's Tangier and I thought that this boat was taking us to Tangier but it's not it's taking us to Tangier Med so I have to get off here and find my way to Tangier so maybe train maybe bus maybe taxi I don't know I I guess I should have known that was uh, the case but I had I, I didn't know I honestly just thought it was the same thing um, yeah so Great. Well, this is certainly an unforeseen development, having to figure out how to get to Tangier from Tangier Med. But it's all part of the adventure, right? Both a little rocky right now. Coming into the port. This is a deep water port, I guess deep enough for uh, all these ships to come in. And there's more of the port that stretches over to the left there. And I imagine that's probably why you can't go directly to Tangier. I don't, it's probably not deep enough over there. I don't know. 
maybe I'm maybe I'm talking out of my ass again but uh, let me know <laughs> if you have the answer let me know in the comments because man I could have sworn that we were going directly to Tangier but you know living and learn it is what it is and it's fine by me it's, it's only 10 o'clock actually no I think it's I think it's 9 because we gained an hour 9.32 because we gained an hour now this is what I call advanced three-point turns shooting water out this side to push the front over to the right and the back and in just look at that blue okay I'm all strapped up again and we're pulling in So I made it here safely. Start walking up this escalator, which wasn't working, and then as soon as I step on it, it starts to move. That's kind of cool. It saves electricity that way. I have no idea where I am. What's sorry? Um, yeah, sure, actually, that would be great. Yeah, yeah I'll, okay, I'm in a taxi. I'm gonna hop in the front real quick. Hop to the cab. It's uh, 300 dirham to um, to Tangier. And yeah, uh, it's definitely a lot better than taking a bus or I don't think that there's a train option available. So I'm here with, uh, what's your name? Mohammed. Mohammed? Nice to meet you, Mohammed. That's so nice. Almost nicer than in Spain. <laughs> Look at those hills. Yeah. Plenty more to come. So many amazing beaches. impressions of Tangier and it is absolutely gorgeous here oh my gosh the white walls these wooden doors of the shops lining the street yeah. and my cab driver Hello. Mohammed was so nice so nice so helpful I think I I'm fairly certain that I overpaid um, what like you normally expect to pay but it's totally fine he got me here quick and for like 30 Canadian dollars. Can't really complain. Definitely could be worse. I mean, back home I'd expect to pay twice that for an hour cab ride, so this I'm definitely okay with. So far, Morocco has been too good to me, too good. Wonderful cab driver who was very happy that I paid him 300 dirham to get here. Some friendly street cats. I, uh, well, I was looking for a cab, and thankfully, I, well, I had helped these women with their, um, their luggage and I was looking for a cab and they came up and they helped me find one. Um, at the station, super friendly. I got off and there was a guy also like, well, he was like, oh, tend your hostel, tend your hostel. I can show you there, come with me, come with me. And I, I can find my own way there. I know what come with me means. It means come with me and then pay me when you get there. Anyways, he was super friendly and I, I told him I was good and he said, okay, have a good day and left me alone. Or 35 dirham, it's about four Canadian dollars. It's got all this omelet, bread, um, whatever this is, it looks like some kind of spread. Jam, little orange juice, olives, Moroccan tea. I don't know if this is a good price for Morocco or not. It's pretty good, you know, can't complain. Like nothing to write home about. This tea, on the other hand, oh my goodness. It's like it's hot, it's a little sweet, minty and refreshing at the same time and it just like, it is so tasty. Oh, it's the right choice, absolutely. 
I'm gonna have one of these every single day that I'm here. It is an absolutely gorgeous afternoon slash almost evening. And I'm here in Tangier, Morocco. Just at the top of my uh, little hostel here. We have an amazing terrace, place to hang our clothes. I did some laundry earlier, so got those drying out right now. Perfect view of the whole city. The Medina is all through here. Went for a run just down by the beach earlier. It's fantastic here. So I'm gonna quickly showcase what the rest of this hostel looks like. And then the plan is to go out and check out the market, well, Medina. There's lots of cool shops down there. Get some food, because I'm starving. What an amazing little hostel. I don't know whose room that is, but they locked out. Got a bathroom, bedrooms. This one's my room. I'm staying on the top bunk. No one else is here at the moment, but it was full yesterday. Got a bathroom in there. And then another room with no one here. Jeez, I guess the hostel is really empty today. Not such a bad thing. And then this other floor is the same thing with the kitchen on the ground floor. Tangier Hostel in this really nice little alley. Well, I say really nice, but if I was back at home, I'd think oh, this alley is a little sketchy. But honestly, I've not been worried for a single second so far. Everybody has been super friendly. And it's just really unique, especially compared to what I'm used to back home. Everywhere you go, there's little alleys left and right, really cool shops. You can pretty much get anything you want here. All sorts of fruit and veggie shops, pretty much everywhere you go. Spices, bread shops too, more fruit. And it's surprisingly not too busy right now too, which is really nice. Normally this place is absolutely packed. Ooh, awesome. And the fruit here is so good and very cheap too. I can't even tell you how many oranges and peaches I've had so far. This is kind of the main street here. Main drag, shops lining both sides. You can find cats all over the streets here too. This one seems a little bit aggressive, but normally they're just really docile, sitting around sleeping or getting, drinking the milk that people leave out for them. They live a good life. Katie number two, it's gonna be number two of probably 50 that I see on this whole walk. They are seriously everywhere. And no rats. I guess that's uh, their way of controlling the rats. I haven't seen a single one so far. There's some dogs too, but it's mostly cats. One of the surprising things about Tangier for me, it's hot, but not too hot. Obviously I was expecting heat, but this is really not unbearable at all. Like get a nice sea breeze too. I mean, when I went on my run earlier, it was scorching and kind of unbearable then, but I was also running, so that's probably why. Oh, a couple of puppies here too. My main goal for this afternoon is, well, number one, to get some food because I'm starving. And then number two, just get lost, honestly. Get lost, see parts of the city that I haven't seen yet. Katie number three. Hey, little guy. Thank you. I was in the store buying some dates as a little bit of a snack and I asked what the difference is and he said they're just from different countries. I think I'm gonna get some, what's your favorite? Uh, Morocco. Morocco? Okay, well then I'll get some Moroccan dates please. <laughs> Spices, dates, oh my gosh. I love dates, but I can't just buy everything that I see. Otherwise I'll be broke within the hour. This is the Grand Souk here. And correct me if I'm wrong, but Souk means market. All around here, these little streets, side roads, branch off. And you can find, like I said, literally anything you could, anything you could desire. Food, clothes, shoes, gadgets, jewelry. Whether they're real or not, I don't know. I was trying one of these Moroccan dates. Sweet, chewy, exactly what you'd expect from a date. And of course, I'm an idiot for asking him what his favorite one was. Of course he's gonna say Morocco. He's from Morocco. And you know what? It was a great choice. Fish market. As you can see by the seagulls that are all gathering around hoping for scraps. Another little kitty too. Nope, there he goes. Another one, and another one. I'm not kidding, they're everywhere. They are everywhere here. These guys are just having a feast. 
That one's already all feasted out. Another thing to note, for 250 grams of dates, I paid 30 dirham, which is about three and a half, yeah, three and a half Canadian dollars, about three US-ish, something like that. I don't know if that's a good price for dates here in Morocco, but to me, three bucks for all those dates is a screaming deal. You can buy knockoff flip-flops if you want, or, unless that's a real Supreme flip-flop. Jack, let me know if it is. I know you're the Supreme expert. Thing. Bread shops, like that one over there, everywhere, everywhere. And anywhere you go for dinner, and for lunch too, you order a tagine, or some kind of rice dish, or couscous or whatever, it'll always come with bread. They'll come with a basket of bread, and it is so much food. Like, I don't think I've had a meal here where I've been able to eat all the bread that comes with it too. I think that might be the point, to like fill you up on bread. Just stumbled upon these cannons overlooking the port. What a spot. It looks like I'm not the first person to discover this place. Everybody seems to be hanging out here today. And what a perfect evening for it too. I think I'm gonna walk down to the water. I don't really know of any restaurants that are down there, but I'm gonna head that way uh, and then find a restaurant, whether it be close to the water or back up into the city a bit. Morocco might not typically be uh, like number one in most people's travel itineraries of places that they want to go. Come to Morocco. It is underrated, it's cheap, it's not super touristy too, especially if you're a young traveler. Tangier isn't a huge, uh, huge city by any means, but there are amazing hostels here. It's not, hey, what's up? <laughs> it's not just uh, the one that I'm staying at. And everyone that I've spoken to has said, Marrakesh, it's got great hostels. Shashawan, Fez, Rabat, Casablanca, anywhere you go, it feels really authentic. It doesn't feel like a travel experience catered to you as a Westerner. And if you want to come here and meet some really nice people, it's a place to be. It is a place to be. If I had been smart, I would have taken a bus from Algeciras to Tarifa and then taken the ferry from Tarifa to here. But instead, I thought, oh, I'll just get the, the ferry from Algeciras to Tangier. And turns out, it took me to Tangier Bed. Just like people are employing a fishing technique. Throwing bread in the water, waiting for the fish to gather around the bread, and then hope that it bites their line. And they seem to be pretty successful. There's a bunch of fish over there. It looks like maybe he's caught one. Ooh, he's reeling in. Oh, no. Next time. It's gonna take a lot of getting used to walking across these streets, even at the, the crosswalks there, and having nobody stop for you. They'll slow down, but they are not throwing the brakes all the way on. Oh, no, sir. It's a little scary at times. Now I find myself locked out of the Medina. I haven't seen a single entrance. I've seen a bunch of winding paths like this one that go up the mountain or the side of the hill here. And maybe that's a way up into the Medina but I don't want to climb up there only to find out that I have to scale some kind of wall. Oh, I made a wrong choice. I don't even know if I can get up into the Medina this way. I see there's a cat up there and a silhouette of a man. I found a new path. And on the bright side, I get this gorgeous view. There's Tarifa over there. I found my way back into the Medina. There's a table, and I got myself a tagine right here. Unfortunately, I only got a seat inside because it was packed outside. It's a little hot in here and a little cramped, but at least you get to see all the action as it happens. Tajin, for those who don't know, I don't know the exact food process, but as far as I know, it's like a clay pot bottom and they, uh, they put like another clay top on top of it, cook it, it gets real hot, and then they take it out of the oven or whatever, whatever it is and put a, another bowl on top. It's like a grand reveal on the table. It's pretty cool and super tasty. Something that I'll never get sick of too. Olive service, yeah. I love olives. The whole plate's gonna be gone, no problem. Here it is. Tajin, oh my God, it is fantastic. So tasty, okay, let me just set up this camera here. Got beef. Beef right here. The sauce is great. And these are prunes. Hot prunes on top of like a beef stew. Sounds kind of strange, right? 
but trust me, it is amazing. It's, it's so good, it's incredible. I have to show you. I'll even take a bite. Beef and prunes, tagine, and tangier. Here we go. Oh my god. Mm. That's tasty. You gotta try new things, you know? And I like prunes, so like when they're cold, like back in North America, when I think prunes, I think a bag of cold prunes you keep in the fridge. This, mmm, 10 out of 10, stellar. Get tagine, I see all good. I had to get the harissa too. I think harissa just means chili. I got the green one. Uh, the red one's a little too spicy for my liking. Uh, both, both are very flavorful. So, throw a little bit on that. So the staff saw me filming and they're asking, <clears throat> oh, do you make videos, YouTube or whatever? And I was like, yeah, it's a YouTube channel, it's small right now, it's doing it for fun. And they brought me watermelon. How oh, nice, didn't need to do that at all, but they're all very, uh, very impressed with the YouTube channel and got a few more subscribers, so that's nice. <laughs> Shea Hassan restaurant, Kasba, so tasty, very good. And everyone in there is so friendly too, like, what a great place. They make a fantastic tagine. They like my mustache. I mean, what else could you ask for, right? And free watermelon, come on. And with that, I'm gonna call it a video. So if you liked it, yet again, remember to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new video. And once again, thank you for watching. See you all in the next one.